Hi folks and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. Today we're looking at a pair of mid-size crossovers. On my left, the Toyota RAV4 and on my right, the Hyundai Tucson. Now we're not just doing this video for the channel though. My mom and dad are actually looking to purchase one of these two crossovers. These are the front runners. So in this video, we'll go over all the features, all the details, and then of course, we'll get dad to weigh in on which one they're leaning towards actually purchasing. Let's get into it right now. Let's kick this one off with the walk around. So first of all, over here with our Toyota RAV4, this is a RAV4 Limited all-wheel drive, but it does not have the hybrid engine, which means this is a two and a half liter four-cylinder engine. It's making 203 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque, and that is paired with an eight-speed automatic. Now, because it's the limited, the top trim, it gets the more complex all-wheel drive system, which allows it to do two different things. The first one is torque vectoring, which means it can split the torque and send it to where it is necessary, and then it can also disconnect the rear drive shaft for fuel economy. So on the highway, for example, that rear drive shaft will totally disconnect to help you be more efficient. So yes, this is a limited top of the line. You could have a limited hybrid, but we don't have the hybrid here today. And because it's the limited, it gets a couple unique styling things. Everything is body color. You are getting a couple chrome accents like up there in the grill. And then when it comes to the wheels on this thing, this is still just a set of 19 inch wheels on our RAV4 Limited. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, what do you think? What are your eyes telling you about the styling? Let me know down in the comments below. Now let's look at the Tucson. So this is the Hyundai Tucson N-Line. The N-Line edition is all about looking sporty. It's about having that aggressive look to it. And I think they've done it. You're getting a unique grill up there, a unique front fascia, and a couple different styling accents even down the side, once again, to make this thing look more aggressive. Now under the hood of our N-Line is the standard engine, which is a hybrid. It's a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder that's paired with an electric motor. Total system output right here is 226 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. And this is sent through just a six-speed automatic, not an eight-speed over there on like on the Toyota. So again, as we roll around the side, you see the unique N-Line badges, a lot of body color accents here too. And then even things like these little indents around the wheels just to add to the styling a little bit. And then yes, the wheels themselves, that is just a set of 19s, but they are a nice looking set of 19s and you get those end badges down there in the center caps. So now you've seen both models, let's talk about the pricing. And no, this isn't a perfect comparison. N-Line is not a top trim Tucson. It's actually sort of two steps down, unlike our Toyota, which is top trim. So what's the price difference? Here on our Tucson N-Line, the MSRP here in Canada is about $43,500. Over there, our RAV4 Limited all-wheel drive MSRP is about 46,300. So the Toyota is about three grand more expensive. And now we sort of have to go inside, start driving them and then discuss, you know, what are you getting for that money? And is it really worth it? And uh, before we drive them though, let me climb in the back seats and look at the storage to see how these things really work as family haulers. First, the back seat of the RAV4, and I always like to start with the child seat situation. So we have two lower latch positions here, and we have three top tethers along this second row. Now let me climb in. So this is 37.8 inches of second row leg room, and it's quite a bit. Honestly, it's comfortable for me. I stand at six foot two, I have enough headroom. I actually have probably a good inch or two there of headroom, plenty of knee room. My knees are just a little bit tall, but not really that uncomfortable. I could sit back here for uh, any amount of time. So yeah, this is definitely a big enough backseat for a full-size adult. When it comes to amenities, 
two USB-C ports down there in the center. We do have vents there for ourselves. And here in our Limited, we do have a heated second row of seats, which is pretty nice. Now uh, let's go look at what the storage is like behind the seats. So we crack the back. That is powered. And now we're looking at 37.4 cubic feet of storage space behind that second row, which again is quite a bit. This is a really nice amount of space to be able to put stuff and still have your second row in play. Uh, a couple features, we do have, of course, a nice sunshade, a nice uh, grocery hider there so no one sees what you're buying. Underneath the floor here, we got a big rubber mat, but then we also have a legitimate spare tire, which is always nice to see. And then power back here too, just a simple 12 volt over there in the corner. But again, nice to have some kind of power at the rear end of your RAV4. So yeah, nice amount of storage right there. Now we can hop over to the Hyundai and see how it compares. And now we look at the Tucson. So first of all, child seat situation is the exact same. Two lower latch positions and three top tethers along the back. So this, is 41.3 inches of second row legroom, and it does feel like more. I have more knee room, and my knees are sitting a little bit lower, and even though we have the big panoramic sunroof here, I still have enough headroom. Overall, I have to say this feels a little bit more comfortable. I definitely have a little bit more space here in the Hyundai. Now, when it comes to features, I get two USB-A ports down there in the center, and I also have the vents there as well, although no heated second row here in the Tucson N-Line, but I can forgive it that just because it has so much space. Oh, and I should show you, the seat reclines quite a bit. The RAV4 reclines as well, but this reclines quite a bit in the second row, which is pretty cool. All right, now let's go see what the storage is like. So, crack the back. Also a powered hatch. And this is 41.2 cubic feet of storage space. So yes, the Hyundai does have more leg room and it has more storage behind that second row. Uh, we don't have the big net or that rubber mat like we had in the Toyota, but still more space is nice. You do have a 12 volt outlet over here, exactly like the RAV4. So you also have power here. And then we can see what's underneath this floor. Spot for tools and a big tray. And then underneath the tray, Oh, no spare tire. I was hoping for a spare. And this is the tire, whoops, now I can't get it back in. This is the tire mobility kit, it says, so I'm assuming that replaces your spare. Let me just be 100% sure here. Yep, no spare tire down there. So that's an important distinction. We do have a full-size spare, or a real spare tire, I should say, over there on the RAV4. Here in the Hyundai, you're only getting the tire mobility kit. <laughs> so uh, if that's an important point for you, then uh, you're going to want to avoid the Tucson. But when it comes to storage and overall space, the Hyundai is better. Hey you, are you enjoying this video? Well, thanks for watching and don't forget, go below, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, but then make sure you hit that notification bell. If you don't hit the bell, you won't get served with every single one of our videos and you're not gonna wanna miss what we have coming next. All right, now here we are, we're about to pull out in the RAV4. So why don't you throw it in reverse, Dad, and we will see the camera system. So actually, you gotta start moving to see this one do its, uh, its cool party trick. So start backing out. And you'll see that the top-down view right away goes clear. And when you look at that, it shows you what's underneath the vehicle as you're moving. So the way the Toyota system works is it's literally taking a picture of what's behind you and then superimposing your vehicle on it. But I like it, Dad. I think it's really neat and gives you an even better sense of where your vehicle is sort of in your driveway or in a lane. I can tell if I got the squirrel or not. Exactly. Now we can hit some buttons here so you can just get the rear view if you'd like. Or then you can get a wide rear view or the rear and the top down, and then you can change up your predictive lines. But yeah, that's a pretty neat system here on the, uh, the RAV4 camera, that underbody view. Now we're driving here in the RAV4 Limited, and as I've already told you guys, this one is not the hybrid. This is just your basic two and a half liter, naturally aspirated four cylinder. So it'll be interesting to sort of see the differences in how they drive. But for now, why don't you put your foot into it and let's see what 200 horsepower of 
four-cylinder engine really feels like. Should I take it out of eco mode first? Yeah, put it in sport mode. It has okay. a sport mode. All right, now it's in sport. Okay, let's feel Ready? it. You know what? It hit harder than I expected it to. It, it, <laughs> it goes. It's not bad. It's really not bad, um, which is exactly what you want. And of course, some people, they end up going for hybrids because of the additional sort of off the line power you get from the battery. But I wouldn't complain about that power right there at all. And this is an eight speed automatic too. The Hyundai is only a six, so that may affect it too. That'll be interesting. But yeah, powertrain's fine. It's pretty quiet too. It's mostly just uh, inoffensive is the way I'd put it. <laughs> okay, fair. Mm -hmm. So we mentioned sport mode, Dad, but we should mention uh, we do have eco. You said that. We have normal mode, and you also have a snow mode here, plus rock and dirt mode. So Toyota does give you a whole bunch of different drive modes. Of course, you know, coming from Canada, I do appreciate having snow mode. And essentially what that usually does is it dulls your throttle response and then at the same time it will make sure that the all-wheel drive system is splitting power evenly sort of right out of the gate. I appreciate having those features. It makes it just a little bit of a no-brainer to drive in the snow, less likely to be slipping tires and things like that. And that's what's great about these vehicles. They are all-wheel drive mm -hmm. and when you get a four-season climate it, it's nice to know that that's there and quite honestly it's not something you think about every day. It's just always working in the background and there is rarely a weather condition that you just sort of go, well, yeah, I'm not going out in that. Yep. Uh, if you gotta go, you can go, the, the vehicle can handle it. Yep, absolutely. So we should talk about the interior. Uh, this is the Limited, so this is the top trim of the RAV4. You get some of the nicer accents, like this sort of chrome bar up here. You notice the entire dash is a soft touch rubber material, and then you do get some stitching, things like that. Plus, we get the updated Toyota infotainment system with the large touch screen up here in the center stack. Now, I will say, uh, you know, this, this design of sort of a tablet stuck onto the dash, it's been around now for many, many years. But even more so than some other vehicles, I feel like this one feels like an afterthought. Feels like they really ran out of space for the big screen and then said, just tack it on there, it'll be okay. And my mom, who's a shorter driver, like five foot something, she actually says that the screen impedes her vision a little bit because she's that much shorter it kind of gets in the way a yeah, little I mean, so she's, she's looking right over the steering wheel here and so just off to the right she gets a little bit of a blind spot off the hood yeah which is interesting it's something i would have never considered so well, it's, it's because we look through the top of the windshield <laughs> yeah, exactly so it's good to have that perspective but um yeah other things on the interior still buttons dad toyota still appreciates buttons and knobs obviously although you do have a fully digital gauge cluster um so what do you think what's your first uh first reaction to the interior it, 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 toyota in in general um their, their interiors are subdued, is maybe the right word for it. Sure, they, functional. Uh, functional, subdued, they do not go for, for big color matching uh, decor things. I mean, everything here works, it's nice, but it is, it is far from cutting edge. Sure. Sure, yeah, you are right about that. It doesn't feel like a yeah, cutting edge luxury interior like you'd get some, from some other brands. Now again, talking about luxury though, we can also mention some of the features. So things like wireless cell phone charging down there, a rear camera mirror up here. And I'll stop right there, Dad. What do you think about the rear camera mirror? Again, something that's really coming on strong across the industry. Is it something you like? And keep in mind, if you were happen to be hauling a, I don't know, a dishwasher or something, well then you wouldn't be able to see out your back. So with that in mind, what do you think? There's a visibility issue, yes. Uh, you know, you're gonna get better visibility. My single greatest uh, concern with these is that, in my opinion, they kind of distort distance, mm -hmm. okay? With a regular mirror, I can really judge distance. Um, whereas with these, I kind of have a sense of it, but I'm not really sure if, if, if it's correct. I agree. Uh, my only point would be to say it takes some getting used to. I feel like I'm really used to them now, so I usually turn it on. But yes, there's something about the way the motion is translated from a screen rather than a mirror that makes it a little bit strange to uh, to kind of get used to. And then as you're doing right now, maybe that's the best part about it. You can also just shut it off and then never even worry about it. Yeah, I don't know if Liam can. Mirror. Can you can you shoot this mirror, Liam? Yeah. Because right like right now I got an idiot who's tailgating me. <laughs> so this is with the camera off 
Okay, so then now this is with the camera on. You can see that the image is much wider. The car is actually smaller than when I leave it the other way. Mm -hmm. And right here, because I can see my rear window as well, I get a much better sense of how close that idiot is. Okay? <laughs> And then when you put it like this, well, in both cases, now he's just buried under my bumper. Mm -hmm. So, um, there, you can kind of see the difference between the two. Interesting. All right, moving on from that one, a couple more features I want to mention. Heated and ventilated front seats up here. Uh, we do have adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist, along with the entire Toyota Safety Sense 2.0 suite of features. Um, and a JBL audio system too, so also the upgraded audio system here in the RAV4. So yeah, all that comes together to provide a pretty, again, inoffensive is the word I always come back to with Toyota. It's like a vehicle that it does its job well, in no area does it feel like it really stands out or shines, but that's what a Toyota is. And then we do always have to come back to the reliability point, the fact that you can feel pretty confident purchasing this thing and knowing it's going to run and run and run and run. So, You know, you're absolutely right. And if I can throw in a personal note here, uh, your mom and I are looking to buy this particular car mm -hmm. off of the Toyota press fleet. And so I look at what my needs are at this point in our lives. And first of all, if I buy this vehicle, I'm going to have this for at least 10 years. Is going to be your mom's vehicle. It's going to be very low mileage because we've always got press vehicles. We do have a truck, but sometimes she's like, no, I want my own little car. And so I was like, fine. And so when I'm looking at a vehicle that I know I'm going to have for at least 10 years, I'm looking at reliability. I'm looking at resale and I want everything that she wants in here, but I don't need anything else. Mm. So that's what makes the Toyota for me anyway, you know, head and shoulders at the moment above anything else. Sure. And there's no doubt that Hyundai takes a bit of a different approach. So let's go get in the Tucson now and we can see sort of how it stacks up uh, next to this thing. All right, we're hopping in the Tucson now. We can start by checking out the cameras. So throw it in reverse there, Dad. And you get your rear view and your top down view. And that's about it. Though this is a pretty, uh, simple camera system over here in the Tucson as compared to the Toyota and that's kind of interesting it doesn't even use the entire screen there you'd expect it to go all the way out but no I, I want to know I want to know what's on the radio as I'm backing up <laughs> well there you go now you do so uh, yes camera system certainly goes in favor of the Toyota on this one and now we are driving here in the Tucson N line and uh, Dad, we should start the same way we did in the Toyota by feeling the power, because this is more power on paper. Now you do have drive modes right down here. I can go through them for you. There's your sport mode. You oh, get the red all, gauges. It's all red and angry. All right, hit the gas and let's feel it. Ooh, that's all right. Yeah, not bad. You could kind of feel sort of the, the, the hybrid nature of it because in the Toyota, it really revved up and got kind of loud. Here, you felt like the RPM wasn't exactly matching the amount of power you felt, and that's because you're getting that battery boost, right? Exactly. Uh, so I'd say this felt a little quicker, maybe negligibly so, but not a big difference there in terms of power. And again, with the drive modes, you've got a sport mode, you've got eco, you've got the smart mode here in the Hyundai, which will actually sort of watch how you drive and then tailor the driving experience mm -hmm. to you. So that's sort of interesting. And then also terrain modes. We have snow, mud, and sand. So just like in the Toyota, you do have those off-road modes as well. And the snow mode, again, I think is the most important one for actual day-to-day -day driving, especially when you live somewhere like we do here in Ontario. Now, as far as fuel economy is concerned, and, and this is not scientific, I'm simply looking at what averages the vehicles have been giving me. And I know that over in the Toyota, we've been around 10, 10 and a half liters per 100 kilometers. Right. And right now I'm looking at this uh, Hyundai and it's telling me it's 9.6 liters per 100. And that, of course, is the hybrid. Um, not a vast difference no not a not a huge jump and you know what obviously it's going to depend on what kind of driving you're doing the hybrid will really shine in city driving around town so a lot of around town stuff that gap might get bigger 
But yeah, you know what? It's still just a little four-cylinder in the Toyota. So even if you are driving it hard, fuel economy is still going to be decent. Uh, but don't forget that the Hyundai is also cheaper. So in this case, you're paying less for this powertrain, which will also save on fuel. And that's an interesting point on the hybrid because here in the Tucson, basically, not basically, every trim above base, Dad, Ooh. gets the hybrid as the standard engine. So they're not actually making, you know, it's not an upcharge, they're building it right in. So here in the end line, yeah, this is the standard engine you get. Whereas Toyota hasn't done that. In fact, a lot of car companies don't let you get the most expensive option without getting the most expensive powertrain. Toyota doesn't do that. You can get a limited without the hybrid like we have. So again, interesting choices. You know, Toyota is known for hybrids, but they're actually giving you more choice than Hyundai, who is basically saying, yeah, you have to take a hybrid. And then here in the Hyundai, you can also get a plug-in hybrid, which actually you can get for the RAV4 as well. So if you wanted the plug for both of these models, you could get them. But anyways, just a different approach to how they build in uh, the content to both the vehicles. Now we can shift our attention inside. And yeah, I think basically what we said about the Toyota is kind of the exact opposite here in the Hyundai. This does feel fashion forward. It feels like they really wanted you to get in here and go, whoa, it feels a little more cutting edge, a little more stylish. You get this big swooping line right in front of the passenger and the driver. The nice uh, screen, which is really nicely integrated with all the buttons below it. The fully digital gauge cluster over there. Nice red stitching and little red accents up here on the dash. Uh, when it comes to just style, of course, totally subjective, but I think most people would agree that the Hyundai just has more of it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, they've spent a ton of money. I mean, it's it's been going on for well over 10 years, but I mean, it, the, the Koreans went out and they hired Germans, <laughs> they hired true. French guys, they hired people to come in and say, look, we know how to build a car, but we don't know how to make it look pretty. Mm -hmm. And frankly, they were smart. They went through the Italians. They've gotten all that sort of knowledge from the people who really know how to create an intriguing interior. Yeah. And, and that's what this one is. I mean, I liked it from the second that I got into it. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned earlier, we are looking to buy a car for your mom. So we've been looking at the Toyota, the RAV4. We've been looking at this as a comparable. Yeah. And right off the hop, this interior is better. Yeah, I, I would say that as well. Um, but better from a point of view of what your eyeballs tell you, I would argue that the Toyota is more functional mainly because it has real buttons. And I don't know how you feel, but these capacitive buttons here in the Hyundai drive me crazy. I don't like them. I hate the fact that there's no volume knob. I felt like Honda already made that mistake for the rest of the industry. Honda got rid of the volume knob and then right away brought it back because people complained so much and Hyundai's gone the same way here. So I will just say that I, I really dislike all of these touch sensitive buttons here in the Honda. They are trying to do this future forward thing. Um, they're willing to go out on a limb and give it a try, but there are certain things, as you said, Honda did it and there was such pushback that they very quickly brought back the volume knob. Mm -hmm. And I was the same thing. I came in, I looked at it and I went, it's got no volume knob. Yeah. Um, also this push button transmission here. Mm. Uh, it's cutesy, but you know what? PRNDL guys, just make it dead simple. Give me the same thing that I've been shifting for the last 40 years. It's all muscle memory, you know? I don't want to have to learn something new. And when I hit the top button and I think I'm in park, I'm actually in reverse. Yeah. Yeah, no, fair enough. And again, those are the types of things it feels like Toyota doesn't ever want to mess with. So if you want, you know, tried and true and simple, that's where the Toyota usually comes in. Or if you want fashion forward, well, you have a choice here too in the Hyundai. Exactly. So, I mean, it's going to it's gonna serve different owners. And I know that the, the debate can be hot and heavy because there are those guys who just want what I want. And then they're the ones who, the early adopters, the ones that, no, it's new, I want it. Sure. Sure, absolutely. And you know what, we're talking just interior, but I'll just quickly throw out exterior too. I would take the Tucson as well. I think it's a nicer looking vehicle on the exterior. And again, just has more style about it than the RAV4 does. Yep. It's uh, hands down if those are the things you're looking at. Too. Anytime we do a review here at Truck King, we, we tend to mention usage case. And I don't know if we came up with that expression, but I like it because I don't care what vehicle you're looking at, you've got to have a usage case in mind. In other words, what am I doing with this vehicle? How much will I travel? Where am I going? How often am I, am I using it? You know, in the case of trucks, what am I towing? How much weight do I need? Now, with that in mind, I also looked at the usage case when I'm buying this vehicle for my wife. Okay, first off, 
very low mileage. She's not going to be driving very much simply because we have press vehicles in the driveway every week. I also have a truck. She just wanted something a little smaller to scoot around town, go pick up her mother, etc., etc. Um, this is a vehicle that I bet in 10 years we will barely have put maybe 35, 40,000 miles on it, you know, 60,000 kilometers. Now, if you're looking at a hybrid vehicle, you have to keep in mind that you've got a battery which is deteriorating. And that battery has a lifespan and it deteriorates whether you're driving it or not. Whereas with a straight gas engine, when the engine's off, it doesn't deteriorate. It just simply sits there till it's used again. So in this instance, if she was a high miler, and then the hybrid would make all the sense in the world. But with something that we anticipate to be very low usage over a long period of time, that's another reason why I wouldn't buy the hybrid. Sure. Yeah, that's a fair point. You might have to deal with the battery one day. And, and yes, is it more efficient? Of course it is in the hybrid, but is it that much more efficient? The answer is going to be no. You know, the Toyotas are also going to offer you good fuel economy. So, uh, yeah, for your usage, I think you've got the right uh, right idea. Yeah, so every time you got to think about how you're going to use it because that's how the different technologies are going to serve you best. Sure. Okay, guys, you know what? We're coming to the end of this one. This is an interesting comparison because we're not just looking at two small SUVs, but we're also looking at an upcoming brand and a very established brand and for all the reasons that we've laid out in this video and as I mentioned I'm looking to buy one of these two today I'm spending my money yeah you know what I'm gonna buy that RAV4 and mostly because I'm gonna have it a long time I want the reliability I like the resale that Toyota offers me and all-wheel drive and a nice driving position for my wife no-brainer style wise Really nice stuff going on over here at Hyundai, but I'm still going Toyota. So that's it, listen, go below. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member of the channel, and please hit the bell so that you get notification of every new video that comes on Truck King, and we'll see you again very soon.